Deception is still the number one tactic that the enemy uses to steal, kill, and destroy in your life and, and to bring you into rebellion. Well, I would never rebel against God. Well, it's very, very subtle. For instance, if you don't believe the word of the king, who's king of the kingdom, that's rebellion. Whose word do you believe? Now, you, I would agree you've been taught things that are not of the kingdom. You've been raised in a perverted culture that calls good evil and evil good. Satan makes sure he wants you to believe that his way of doing things is normal. It's the natural thing. It's what's going to happen. It's how life is. That is not true. But if you believe that, you'll have that because he has legality in your life because of what you believe and speak in the earth realm. All right? So be alert and sober. Be alert for what? What am I going to be alert for? I need to know his tactics if I'm alert and don't know the tactics, it's not going to help me being alert, right? I have to be alert of not, I have to have knowledge of his tactics to be watching for them. All right, so we need to understand that. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. What are strongholds? He's talking about strongholds in your mind how you believe things are supposed to operate, strongholds, thoughts. We demolish arguments and every pretension. That's a preconceived idea of how things operate. That sets itself up against the knowledge of God, up against the knowledge of God. Well, this is how life works. God doesn't heal. See, that's a pretension. That's a, that's a preconceived idea that someone taught you that God does certain things certain ways. Your understanding of God has been faulty. Even insurance policies say an act of God kills people. Your perception of God, his character, his kingdom has been faulty from the beginning. You need to understand these seeds of perversion were planted in the earth realm by Satan to keep you in agreement with his kingdom so he has legality over you. Now the Bible says truth sets you free. Truth is the weapon of our warfare. It's the sword of the Spirit. And you need to know truth. You'll never be free without truth because you have nothing to bounce off a lie against and you'll receive anything that the enemy throws at you. Now, ultimately, of course, it says here that we take captive every thought or a pretension, thoughts that set themselves up against the knowledge of God and we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. You can't take something captive unless you know it's illegal. When Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted, he answered the temptation with what? It is written truth. It is written truth. You see, you have to know truth. In a court of law, unless you know the law, well, I guess it's your house. I mean, I have the deed signed, but I guess it's yours. You said it is. Right? You wouldn't do that. You would say, excuse me, that's my house. You go toe to toe, right? You say, no, illegal. You'd enforce, you'd want your rights enforced, correct? If you don't know what truth is, you can't enforce any rights because you don't have any rights. Now we're talking about life and death, friend. This is serious stuff. Serious stuff. This isn't church on Sunday morning. This is life and death. It's your life and and not your death, but trust me, we've counseled so many people over the years. They end up places they never want to. All right, so Satan's tactic. Learn this, be aware of it, be alert to it. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 15. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. But each person is tempted when they are dragged away, underline, circle the word dragged away, by their own evil desire and enticed. Desires always long to be fulfilled. A desire drags you. Have you ever noticed? I never meant to do that. I, 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 can't, believe I, I can't believe I did that. Or how many, you know I'm talking about. You were drugged there. What do you mean drugged there? You had a desire. The human spirit is designed by God to incubate ideas, to incubate and create and to speak God's creative force into the earth realm. That creative force creates a future. 
And what the enemy wants to do is put a picture in your spirit that is not of God. And if you do not know and call it illegal, it begins to incubate a picture and an image that drags you to fulfillment. In other words, if you spend your time watching adulterous movies, you will find yourself in adultery. I never intended. Listen, you don't have a choice. Your spirit is designed that way. That's why Proverbs chapter 4 says, above everything else, guard your heart, for out of it flows the issues of life. All right, we'll get there. Okay. I don't hear much applause yet, but anyway. <laughs> Each person is tempted when they are dragged away. Now understand this, is a, this works both ways. A good desire drags you as well. Napoleon Hill wrote a book, famous book, Think and Grow Rich, on this principle. Morning, noon, and evening, you put, it, you put your, your, your vision up there, and your spirit is going to start producing answers and ideas to get you there. It's going to drag you there. This is how the human spirit's made. Now, Satan knows that. So dragged, going to drag you there. Then after desire has conceived. That's a plan. You see, once you begin to meditate... Everyone's enticed. That's not, that's not the sin. That's not the problem. You're going to be enticed. You live in a culture that's full of enticing images, all kinds of things. What you need to do is discern, is it legal or not? Is it of God or, is, or if it's not? And if it's not, you need to cast it aside. But the minute you pick it up, you say, well, it's, it's just fun to think about stuff like that. Oh, no. Oh, it's not fun because it's leading someplace. The minute you begin to meditate on that, wouldn't that be awesome? Wouldn't that be, I think I'd like that. You are beginning the process of being drug someplace. And you better make sure it's where you want to go. Then when you have been enticed and you pick that thought up, then you begin to invent a plan. You're, you begin to calculate a plan to fulfill. Oh, it, it's still free. It's not gonna, I'm not going to do it. Of course I would never do that. But you envision and you kind of play with the idea. You play with it, never planning to do it. But you, you begin to envision how that would look, how that would walk out, how a plan would operate. Then it says, when desire has conceived a plan, it gives birth to sin. That's the action. It gives birth to action. And then when it's full grown, when you can't stop it, when it's, oh, you're over your head, when it's full grown, it controls you. Man, someone needs, to get, someone needs to get excited about this because this is how it works. Do you understand? This is how it works. This is how it works. This is why they have the one scene in the movie. This is what it is all about. It is after your life. And if you do not understand this process, you will not be alert to it. And you'll think, well, everyone's doing it. It's okay. It's our culture. It's how it's done. It is not how it's done. If you don't believe that, I'll tell you the stats of the horrible response the culture's had because of it and the effects and the destruction and the lives that have been destroyed by it. Oh, the movies don't tell you that. Adultery always ends well. Ladies, listen up. You young ladies, listen up. True love is a love that's faithful to you, that believes the Lord of God over you, protects you, provides, takes care, but with, with the right understanding of what life is. That's how it is. Yeah, it's, this is how it works. It gives birth to sin, and then sin, when it's full grown, you're not in control. Oh, I can stop any time. No, no, you would like that, but it, no, you have compulsion now. You, you deal with compulsion now, not just a thought. You have compulsion. You are trapped, you're in bondage, and you need help because you can't get yourself out of that. Well, thank God this ends, this ends well. Relax, it ends well. <laughs> Every act starts with a thought. Everyone's been enticed. We've all sinned. We've all made mistakes, right? We've all done that. We've got to know how to handle that. First off, this is Satan's plan to bring you into rebellion of the kingdom. I know that's a strong word, but that's what it is. Sin, rebelling against the king's law, all right? Fulfilling a desire illegally, going against righteous or going against what God calls right, how he designed life to be lived. And Satan will go to great and patient lengths to strategize your destruction. 
Jesus was being tempted in Luke chapter 4. Remember the three temptations? At the end of those temptations, he said, of course, it is written each time, right? At the end, verse 13, when the devil had finished all of his tempting, he left him until a more opportune time. Oh, he'll keep trying. What's more opportune time when he's not alert, when he's tired, when under pressure, trials, problems? Pain seeks pleasure. That's what Drenda always t- tells me, and it's a good thought. Pain seeks pleasure. And, you know, we have to be aware of those things. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com, and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing, and thanks for watching.